So this video is an introduction to using the NanoVNA. The NanoVNA is a very complicated little machine. And I know a lot of people are going to buy these things and go, oh my gosh, this is too complicated, I can't use it. And they really only want to do maybe one thing with it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do one thing with it the most simple way possible, and hopefully you can get some use out of your NanoVNA. So we're going to look at antennas. Um, a lot of people buying these things are using them as a uh, antenna analyzer. They want a graph of frequency versus SWR. They want to see how well their antenna is matched. So we're going to try to do that in the simplest possible manner and get you started with the, uh, with the Nano VNA. Now, now the Nano VNA comes with a couple things. Uh, first of all, it comes with a uh, USB-C uh, cable for charging. So you need to connect this to some charger, 5 volts. And on the side of the Nano VNA is a little connector. And uh, the uh, cable goes in there either way. Uh, it's not like other USB cables. You can plug it in upside down or backwards, doesn't matter. And once it, when it goes in, uh, there should be a little blue light in here. And the blue light should flash, and that means it's charging the battery. There's an internal battery. And so once it's charged up, we can use it, uh, and we don't need the uh, power cord any longer. So we'll let that charge over there. I should say that just uh, next to the uh, connector here is the on-off switch. So when the switch is near the uh, uh, cable, that's the off position. And then the other direction is the on position. So it's in the off, off, off position right now. It's being plugged into 5 volts, and we are charging. So we're going to let that sit on the side. Okay. So then, what are these little things? I had never seen these things before, so let's, uh, let's zoom in on those. Okay, you're going to get three of these little uh, things, and uh, one's called an open, one's called a short, and one's called a load. Now, how do you tell them apart? Well, you look inside. So the, from the outside, they all look the same. And they're tiny and they get away from you. Drop them on the floor, can't find them. Uh, they're things that you need to keep track of. All right, so if you look on the inside, this one's kind of like got just nothing. It's kind of like a, a, the letter O. So remember that, letter O is open. This is the open one, okay? There's nothing in there. There's no pin, there's no nothing. It's just open, so this is the open. This one has a pin inside um, and it's shiny. So remember that. The one that's shiny is the short. It's all metal, and, it, and electrically it's just shorted everything out. Um, if you measured the resistance from the pin to the outside, it's just a dead short. So this is the short, shiny is short. And then the other one's got a little piece of plastic in there, and it has a pin, and this is the load, okay? And most of the time, it's a, a silver color as well. These are usually brass colored, and these are usually silver colored. So that's what we need to have. We need to have all three. We need to have the open. Oops. Like I said, to get away from you. We need to have the open, the O, the short, the shiny, and uh, the other one, the silver one, the load. Okay? And this is just 50 ohms. If you measured with a voltmeter from the center to the outside with an ohm meter, you would measure 50 ohms. So that's what we have. Open, short, load. Okay, so we're going to use those. So at the top of the nano DNA are going to be two connectors. These are what are called SMA connectors, but that doesn't matter. Um, if you want to connect different things to your um, nano DNA, you might need an adapter. So if you have a uh, antenna with a different connector, you need an adapter that goes between your connector and, and, and SMA, right? And so we'll, we'll show those later. So there's two. Why is there two? Well, this one's labeled CH0. That stands for channel 0. And this one stands for CH1, channel 1, okay? And then there's these other things in here. We're going to ignore those. We don't care about those. Those are for advanced students. And uh, channel one, we're going to ignore that one too. Okay, so you don't need to know anything about these lines. You don't need to know anything about this connector. This is the only connector you need to worry about, which is channel zero. Okay, so everything is going to go through channel zero. Ignore that one. All right, so we're going to go through a calibration of the device. And during the calibration, we need to attach these open shorts and loads. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to screw them onto this connector. 
okay? The channel zero. So if, we, if we're asked to use the open, we'll take the open, we'll put it on the uh, SMA and we tighten it down and we just hand tighten it. Looks like you can put a wrench on here, don't do that. Um, just hand tighten it, not too tight, and, but making good electrical contact. And that's all there is to it. So we'll, when asked to put on the open, you do that. When asked to put on the short, you do the same thing. It's just right hand thread, you put it on, you're done, right? So that's how we're going to use this thing. And ignore that one. Okay, we're going to turn on the Nano VNA. I've turned off the room light so we can see the display better. And so there's the little switch over here. I, I have the uh, power coming here because my battery's a little low. We're going to flip that switch away from that um, cable and it's going to come on. So you're going to get a display and it's going to look really confusing and you're going to get scared of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it simple, right? So this thing is touch sensitive. So we're going to touch the display and where we want to touch it is in the upper right hand section here. Touch it over here on the, on the, on the right hand side and you'll get a little display and, uh, of things, right? This is the menu system. It says display, marker, stimulus, cal. So a bunch of stuff. We want to hit display. Click on that, and uh, now you get a different selection, and there's something called Trace. Click on Trace, and now there are Trace 0, 1, 2, and 3. And those colors, yellow, cyan, green, and magenta, correspond to the colors of these traces on the screen. And that's too many. Four is too many. So we're going to turn them off, right? So we're going to click on trace one, nothing happens, click on it again, nothing happens, click on it again, there we go. It turned off, okay? So just keep clicking on it till it turns off. If you click too many times, it'll turn it back on, just turn it off. And then do that same thing for trace two, click it off, trace three, click it off. Now you only have one trace left. Okay, that's better already. All right, so we're going to go back. All right, so now that we have just one trace, uh, things are going to be a lot easier, okay? So now we're just going to uh, click right out here somewhere, and that's going to go away, all right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is calibrate the thing. Now, why do we calibrate the thing? Well, it needs to have internal calibration for what you want to do. It's a very complex machine, and it can handle all kinds of frequencies all the way from uh, 50 kilohertz to 1 gigahertz. So that's too big of a range. So we need to tell what range we want to operate on, and we want to calibrate on that range. And why do we want to do it, uh, e not each time, but usually for each type of antenna we're going to test? That's because it only stores 100 calibration points. So let's say that we set it up to calibrate between, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, 1 megahertz and 100 megahertz. It's going to divide that into 100 different spaces. So every megahertz, it's going to do a calibration. So it's going to be very accurate from 1 to 100. But it's not calibrated anywhere else. Now, if we calibrated it from 1 megahertz to 900 megahertz, then it would have to skip a bunch of points. And it would work, and it would be fine. But we can get a more accurate measurement if we calibrate it over the range that we want to use it, OK? So a lot of people will be using these things for um, radios that are somewhere between 100 megahertz and 500 megahertz. So 1.44 megahertz, 220 megahertz, 440 megahertz. That's kind of the range a lot of people will be using these things in. So let's, let's calibrate it from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz, and then we'll be done. We can test antennas in any range, OK, inside 100 to 500 megahertz. So let's do the calibration. Again, we're going to click the upper right, and we're going to click, uh, we want to hit calibrate. So do we see it? Trace, format, scale, channel, transform. I don't see it. OK, so we'll click back. Oh, wait a minute. Now I get a different menu. Display, marker, stimulant, cal, C-A-L. That's what we want. OK, we're going to hit uh, calibrate. And this is where we calibrate. Now, before we do that, though, we have to set up the frequency range that we want to operate on. OK, so we're a little ahead of ourselves. So let's go back. And we're going to hit stimulus. Stimulus just means what frequencies we're going to use. So we hit stimulus. Ah, there we go. Great. We'll see start and stop. 
forget everything else. We're just going to use start and stop. Okay. So we're going to say start. Now you'll get a number thing here and we're going to hit the numbers one, zero, zero. You'll see them at the bottom here. And then we're going to hit either gigahertz, megahertz, or kilohertz. So the G, M, and the K, that's what they stand for. So we want 100 megahertz. We're going to click the M. So now if we look at this thing, it says start right here at the bottom. It says start 100 megahertz. So we were, we're there. Okay. So we click on the upper right again. Now we click on stop 500 megahertz. So now we're going from 100 megahertz to 500 megahertz. Great. Okay. Now we have the frequency range set. So any graph that we get now is always going to go from 100 to 500, but we need to calibrate. The next thing we need to do is calibrate. So we're going to go to CAL calibrate and I always hit reset. So I'll click on reset and now we go calibrate and now we're in the calibrate menu. And now we'll see a list of things, open, short, load, isolation, through and done. Okay. That's what those are. And that's the order that you want to calibrate in. Okay. So you want to go from top down. So it says open, we're going to calibrate and open, which means we need to get our open. Remember that's the one with the uh, little O shape, the open one. So we're going to screw that on to channel zero. And when it's on, we're going to click on open and that's it done. It's highlighted. It's done. Calibration is really fast. Next one is short. That's the shiny one Put that one on. And we'll click on short done. Now we'll put in the load. Okay. And we'll click on load. Now the next two people are going to yell at me. People are going to say, Oh, you need to do this the right way. No, you don't. If all you're going to measure is SWR, you really don't need to do anything about those. You just need to have some number in there. And isolation just says, uh, is there's nothing on channel zero and there's nothing on channel one. If they talk to one another, that's a bad thing. So that's kind of a complicated thing inside the machine. We just don't need to worry about that. We just need to click it. So just click it, just click it and through just click it. Okay. And then say done. Now you calibrated. Okay. So remember, this is the, this is the made simple version, not the real version. This is the made simple version. Okay. So now we just click save zero. Now, why do we save it in zero? Zero is the location. When you turn the instrument on, it does a recall zero. So whatever you've saved, it's going to pull it back out. So it's going to save your frequency range. It's going to save that you want to do SWR. It's going to save that calibration. It's going to save everything. So every time you turn the meter on now, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to be great. Okay. Now that we're calibrated, we want to measure SWR and we are not right now. We are measuring log mag, whatever that is. So let's go here to display format. And here's all of our choices. We can have it do a bunch of things. The only one, the only one that we care about is SWR. It's down here. So let's click on SWR. So now up here at the top left, it says channel zero SWR. Yay. So that's what we want. All right. So let's disconnect our little, um, so, because it's 50 ohm load and we just calibrated the SWR is perfect everywhere. It's right down to here at the bottom. Remember SWR is good if it's low, right? SWR of, of 1.0 is, is theoretically the best. So we're going to remove the antenna and then everything goes boom. Everything goes up to the top. Now I have an antenna here. I'm going to connect the antenna to channel zero. Okay. Look, our antenna is perfect everywhere. No, it's not. <laughs> That's because SWR is a very low number, right? SWR of one is perfect. 1.5 is good. And SWR of two to one, uh, most people think that's kind of the upper bound. SWR of three to one, people say, oh, that's bad, right? And right now, if you look at this number up here, it says SWR 10. That means that every division is 10. So this would be an SWR of 10, SWR of 20, SWR of 30 to one. These would be terrible. So we need to change the scale of the uh, SWR. So we're going to click, 
we're going to go back, we're going to go back, we're going to go to display, we're going to go to scale, scale, and we're going to say scale per division. Okay, we want to change that, so click on that top one. Now, enter the number point two five decimal two five, and then hit the X1. And there you go. So now, what did I just do? I changed the scale so that every mark, every horizontal line on the uh, uh, VNA is a quarter of an SWR. So this is 1, this is 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, and 2. So the very center line is an SWR of 2 to 1. Okay, so you kind of think of that, okay, in the middle, things are above the middle, that's bad. Things that are below the middle, that's good. And so the antenna is good here and it's good over here. This is kind of a strange place, but we want to be looking at this two meter section because that's what the antenna is designed for. This is just some extra wavelength multiple of the antenna, but we're interested in here. So let's zoom in and look just at the uh, two meter band. So we're going to go back. We're going to go back. Stimulus, start, so the, the 2 meter band starts at 144 megahertz and, the, and it stops, stop, at 148 megahertz. There we go. So that's how that antenna works on the 2 meter band. Uh, this is 1, this is 1.25, and this is 1.5. So it's 1.5 at the beginning of the band, and then it drops down to uh, below 1.25 here at the end of the band. So there you go. Now there's this little marker here. That little marker tells you exactly what's going on here. Um, if I use the little wheel here at the top, this little wheel, if I... It's not really a wheel, it's kind of a, a push-pull thing. So if I push it to the right, this little thing moves. So I'm going to make it move, that's the marker, and the marker is moving down. And the marker is right there at the very bottom, and I can read where that marker is. It's at 146.96 megahertz. And right here I can read the SWR, 1.127. Okay, so it's doing really, really well there. The other thing you can do is you can click on that little, you click and hold that little marker and then you can drag it around. Okay, so I can put it over there, I can put it over there. So I really don't use the thumb wheel. I just grab it and drag it around. Drag it there, drag it there. Okay, so drag it here, it should be around 1.5, it's 1.48. Drag it here, it should, right be, should be right at 125, 1.247. So that's, that's how you use a VNA, a nano VNA, simplistically, okay? This is the bare minimum. And this will get you up and going. And everything else from there, it does, the nano VNA does all kinds of stuff. And there's lots of videos on that. I have a bunch of videos on doing fancy things with the nano VNA. But this is as simple as it gets, I think. And uh, it should get you up and running.